what I love to do is uh, invent and innovate, and specifically in the area of manufacturing technology. And I, that's how I started 3D printing. The, uh, the idea doesn't come completely from nowhere. And in my case, I had had a lot of experience uh, making stuff, especially in the machine shop. So, uh, so I was always building stuff in the machine shop, and I even worked in a machine shop one summer. So I understood how, how long it took to make prototypes, especially, and how long it's also related to how much money it cost. Uh, my first job out of school I was visiting a company. The fellow I was visiting said, you know what, we are a beta site, which means one of the first customers to help test a very, very new product for a really cool machine. Would you like to see it? And of course I said yes. And it turned out that what I saw was a stereolithography machine, which was the first technology in the area of rapid prototyping, which is what it used to be called, or what's now called 3D printing. And, and it was amazing, and I immediately, because of my experience with making parts, I realized how valuable it was to be able to make a part with, with almost any geometry uh, in, in one machine all at once. But I then said, but it's making a plastic part, which is only useful as a model. And so I decided to come up with another process that would make functional parts, so parts that you could actually put in the machine, including ceramic parts and metal parts. And uh, so that was my motivation. We came up with a whole bunch of ideas about how to do this. And the, the one that we eventually uh, chose, which we called three-dimensional printing, uh, was to inkjet print a liquid binder or glue into a bed of powder, spread another layer, and then do it again and again and again. And, and the attraction of that was that the powder could be a plastic powder, it could be a ceramic powder, it could be a metal powder. So I knew that if I printed a, a mold out of sand as the, as the powder or some other ceramic, I would be able to pour molten metal in and let it cool and I would get a cast metal part out. So I, so I knew that, but I had no idea of whether printing a, a drop of liquid into a bed of powder and then another drop and another drop would define a geometry. Because after all, maybe you put a drop in, and over the course of an hour, that liquid just migrates and spreads everywhere. And the whole powder bed is a little moist, but there's no geometry defined anymore. And so what I thought to do was uh, we had an ice cube tray. And I filled one of the compartments with sand. And then I put a drop of water in. Uh, right in the middle, and I let it sit for a half hour uh, to give it time. If it was going to migrate, then it would have time to migrate. And I put it in the freezer, and I came back a half hour later, and I took it out. And when I pulled on the middle, just the middle came out, not the whole cube, because the water had stayed right there where I put it. And so that's when I knew that this basic concept had a chance.